Hi, today we're going to be dividing fractions using models. Specifically, we're going to be uh, dividing fractions by uh, whole numbers. So first off, we start off by creating an area model that's going to be representing uh, four-fifths. Once I partition my model into, into fifths, I'm going to go in and, and shade four-fifths of the model. Now that I have my visual representation of four-fifths, um, now I'm going to go down to, to dividing. Um, and you have to remember you're, you're dividing um, four-fifths. You're dividing four-fifths by four. So essentially you're asking yourself how many groups of four are in four-fifths. So the first step I'm going to take is do my division. I'm going to go ahead and divide this model of four-fifths by, by four. And there I have four. Now, once again, let's go back to the thought bubble, which asks how many groups of four are in four-fifths? Um, so I look. Okay, I look vertically and I look horizontally. In this instance, it uh, happens to be the same. There I have one group of four, two groups of four, three groups of four, and four groups of four. So once again, how many groups of four are in four-fifths? There's four groups of four in four-fifths. So 4 fifths divided by 4 equals 4. And now that I need to do is find my denominator. And my denominator, all I'm looking at is my area model. How many total parts are there to my area model? I look at the top, and there I have 5. And on the other side, I have 4. Notice how they match up with your division problem. The 5, which is the denominator of 4 fifths, and the 4, which is... Uh, right now, it's currently your numerator, but using standard algorithm, it would become your denominator. And so you multiply those 5 times 4, and it gives you 20. Um, so your answer, your preliminary answer is 4 over 20, but in simplest form, your answer would be 1 over 5. Now, doing standard algorithm, all I do is rewrite the problem and I reciprocate 4 fifths times 1 fourth equals 4 twentieth. so you have to understand why this trick works when we reciprocate why does it work it's because I'm using an area model to show see where the 4 came from where the 5 came from and why I end up getting 20 as a denominator now my next problem I have 3 eighths divided by 2 3 eighths divided by 2 how many groups of 2 are there in 3 eighths so once again, I start off by creating a model representing 3 eighths. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be just a regular square. Uh, but all I'm doing here is matching up my denominator of 8 and my other number, which is 2. So it's a 2 by 8 or 8 by 2 uh, rectangle. It does. You don't have to follow this process. It just makes it easier to partition um, because now I have 8 columns and when I go on to my other partition it'll be very easy to divide this so there I'm creating my model for 3 eighths once I've partitioned it I go in and shade it so there I have a visual representation of 3 eighths I'm going to take those 3 eighths and I'm going to divide it by 2 <laughs> I've just divided it by 2. Now refer back to your thought bubble, which is going to guide you. How many groups of 2 are in 3 eighths? How many groups of 2 are in 3 eighths? Because that's the essence of division, you know, when we first learned about it in second grade. So how many groups of 2 are in 3 eighths? There's one group, there's a second group, and there's a third group. So to answer that question, how many groups of 2 are in 3 eighths? There are a grand total of 3 groups. Um, in 3 eighths. So that's my numerator, 3. Now to find my denominator, 
all I'm doing is looking at the um, area model and how many parts make up that area model. Once again, make sure you note the denominator of 3 eighths and look at the two, see if there is anything in common here. So there we have a grand total of 8. See how it matches up with the denominator of 3 eighths? And on this side we have 2. Once again, notice how that matches up with um, that whole number 2, which eventually, once we reciprocate, using standard algorithm becomes our denominator. So 8 times 2 equals 16. So that's why the standard algorithm works. Our next problem we have 8 thirds divided by 4. Now this one has uh, an improper fraction. So how is this different? Well, um, first of all, if it's an improper fraction, I know that it's going to be um, more than one whole. Because if I start off with one area model, that I'm only going to get as far as uh, 3 thirds. If I do two area models, I'm going to get as far as 6 thirds. So I'm going to definitely need three area models for this problem. And if you're having a hard time deciding how many models you need, just simply start with one, and then that'll let you know how many you need from there. So now that I have my three models there, I'm going to go ahead and start partitioning them into thirds. There I have <clears throat> one third. Two thirds and three thirds. But I need to get to eight thirds. So now it's very easy to see that. There I have four thirds, five thirds, and six thirds. Not quite there yet, almost there. 7 thirds and last but not least I have 8 thirds there. So now I have a visual representation of 8 thirds. On a side note you can see that this is also a mixed number. It's 2 and 2 thirds. But anyways back to dividing. So we have my area models and I'm dividing by 4. So let's go ahead and divide each one of these area models by 4. Okay now look at your thought bubble. It's going to guide you. How many groups of four are in eight thirds? I always think of it this way. This is just how you learn division initially as, as a second grader or third grader. How many groups are there? So how many groups of four are in eight thirds? If you look horizontally, is that a group of four? No, that's a group of three. But look vertically. How many groups of four can you see? There I have one group of four, second group of four, a third group of four, fourth group, fifth group, sixth group, seven, and eight. So there's eight groups of four and eight thirds. Eight groups of four and eight thirds. I could have also very easily circled those just to show myself that I that I have it correctly. Um, so 8 thirds divided by 4 gives us 8. Uh, now to get our denominator once again you want to look at the partitions, the parts that make up the whole. How many parts are there uh, that make up your whole? So we have 8 as a numerator. Now we're not talking about all three of them together. If you add them all together that's going to give you one whole. We're talking about just one of the one of the three. So just look at one of the three how many parts are there? Once again, look at the whole number and look at the denominator. See how they match up. But notice that the numerator, I'm sorry, that the whole number um, hasn't been reciprocated yet. So, But eventually, if we do standard algorithm, that's how we reciprocate. So my denominator is going to be 12. So my answer, my preliminary answer is 8 over 12. In simplest form, that would be two-thirds. Hopefully that helps. Thank you.